Hey, it's Mark Andrews with uh, episode 9, wow, of the 2018 OCFOA Plays of the Week. Got a little bit of exciting news for years truly this past week. I was elected instructional chairman for next season and the 2020 season. I am humbled, gratified, and just a little bit scared, <laughs> but I got some great people helping me along with uh, as, as Chad Wilson, our current instructional chair, Steve Coover, our CIF uh, rules interpreter. So it'll be a great team and I'm looking forward to it. Let's get to the action. All right, Steve Coover sent me a whole bunch of plays, so we're just gonna go through them pretty quick. These first two plays have to do with ineligible receivers downfield. Uh, Steve uh, talks about the fact that, uh, you know, this is becoming pre a prevalent issue because of the RPO off offenses that are being run now in high school. And uh, remember <clears throat> that uh, an ineligible uh, player on the offense is is restricted from going beyond the line of scrimmage if he's not engaged with the de defensive player. If he is engaged, he's allowed to go two yards downfield without being in, in violation. So let's keep an eye on this play. Now Steve goes into what RPO is. So he's saying that if uh, the quarterback you know sees this defensive end crashing on the running back, then he's going to keep the ball, which he does. And now he reads the safety. Now you can see over here, this cluster, um, their linemen are already moving downfield. And this, uh, this umpire should be looking at this, but he's not. He's, he's ball watching, which, you know, easy to do, but we don't want it happening. So now uh, the quarterback's going to wait to see what that uh, safety does. And if safety comes up to get the quarterback, he's going to dump it, which he does right here. And now we have uh, we have linemen five yards downfield. This is a clear foul. Um, and now, of course, the uh, the umpire is the primary on this, but either flank official, especially the flank on the line judge side over here, the line judge could get this foul. Uh, let's take a look at another one. Now, <clears throat> this lineman, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, he is definitely not supposed to do that. That's a clear violation again. And, 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 you know, and once again, the, the line judge should get this. The umpire is ball watching. He should be turned around looking at all this action. Uh, he doesn't need to be looking at, there's nothing here to look at. Uh, now, it's an incomplete pass. Some people would argue that we don't need to throw on an incomplete pass. I would argue that you want to shut this down early. If this happens early in the game, get it, you know, maybe they'll stop doing it, right? We don't have to deal with it later on. All right. Now, this play involves uh, roughing the kicker, uh, some blindside blocks, uh, maybe a flagrant foul. I mean, this is, a, this is a crazy play. So keep an eye on the kicker here. See him get run into there. Um, we're going to show it from the end zone so you get a better look at it. Now, we have two potential uh, fouls here. Now, uh, Steve makes the point that this one's not forceful. This is legal. This one is. So keep your eye on both of them. I'm going to slow it down. So there's the... Oh, gosh. Thing skipped on me. Okay, there's the contact there. And this this up here is more of a cooperative block. They see he sees the uh, action coming. Doesn't even knock him down. Now we've got some more action that we got to watch out for. Uh, this is another uh, block, but he's not defenseless. He sees this coming. Watch. Okay, so that's a legal block. That's not blindside block. But now we have what turns out to be a pretty good foul. So we have. Potential block in the back, and keep your eye on this action here. I'm going to roll it back for you so you can see it. 80 comes up, cleans that player out. I mean, he doesn't see it coming. It's a, it's a devastating hit. And um, you're going to notice that uh, 80 is actually the player that roughs the kicker here. So, you know, not good. So watch this. So we've got the plant leg displaced. This is definitely roughing, not running into. Now see, that's 80 getting up. Now watch what he does.
Got a block in the back. Okay. Watch 80. Let you watch that one more time. He's right here. There is no reason for that. The play is over. Got a flag on it, and Steve thinks this is possibly a flagrant foul. All right, on this play, we're going to see an example of some good dead ball officiating. We're also going to discuss uh, how you judge a helmet coming off a player. So keep an eye on this play. Now, you're going to see that helmet pop off right there. And now watch that white player come in late. Actually, he gets, he gets contacted late. Boom. Right there. You know, and this is what we ask you guys to do, especially this this official over here. He, he's supposed to have a wide field of vision, looking for this kind of stuff, and excellent job uh, getting that. Let's look at it from the end zone. Okay, now we're going to see the helmet come off, and that that helmet just came off on its own. It, there's no illegal act, so that player now has to go off for a play, right? All right. Now from this angle. Doesn't look like much, does it? It's amazing how the angle can change the the look of a play, but I think that's still a great call for a, a late hit. Let's take a look at this one. This one uh, is a block below the waist, and watch the watch the uh, watch the running back here, number eighty again. This guy, this guy's cheap shot artist. Look at that. Okay, let's go back. Now, why do we miss these calls? I can tell you why. It's because we see this all the time on television. Uh, pros in college, this is legal. And uh, well, I think it is anyway. I know. <laughs> but I, we see the, this type of block and we just don't react to it. Now, did you check out that, uh, that catch? Watch this. Who's got that ball? You can make a pretty strong argument that it's the, uh, the 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 receiver, the offensive receiver. There's that low block right there. Now, unfortunately, the cameraman here doesn't have his camera in a position where we can see the uh, the catch here. But watch what happens afterwards. Now, I think you see right there. There's the ball. It, you know, the defensive player has his hands on it. I think the offensive players got the reception. And even if we have a simultaneous, if we rule simultaneous possession here, it belongs to the offense. All right, moving on. This, this play has got a little bit of everything. Okay, so we're going to have kind of a little bit of a busted play, a couple broken tackles here. Number 13 there isn't doing much when he suddenly realizes the running back is broken loose. And watch what he does. Now, some people would pass on that. I agree with Steve. That is a hold. Watch. Watch the restriction right there. Okay, he's got a hold of him. He's keeping the defensive player from getting to that runner. That's a hold. Got the flag. Great job. <laughs> Watch this. Whoa. Did you see that? So, we've got a play at the pylon. He's pushed. Balls in his right hand, and he loses control of it, but did it cross the goal line. Let's take a look at it from the end zone. Get a better look at that hold here. Actually, it's not a better look. <laughs> okay. So Steve says he has a TD, and he points out runners airborne, no goal line extended. Okay, the goal line extended only applies to when a player has his feet in bounds. Okay, so, but we know that he held that ball inside the pylon. So, uh, you know, he satisfies uh, the first part of his uh, requirement. Uh, so Steve says he thinks the runner was successful. Let's take a look at it in slow motion. Come on, there we go. I think he's right, you know crosses the plane then he loses control and this is where the you know the two officials would want to uh, get together to you know to discuss this uh, as it turns out of course with the holding call it's kind of a moot point but uh, well you know that's why they pay us the big money to get these moving on okay we've talked a lot about illegal blocks below the waist let's look at a legal block below the waist now 
Notice that the uh, quarterback is under center, so we're not in that shotgun or pistol that we're always talking about. Watch the action here. I'm going to slow it down. Okay. Center cuts. Now, look at where the ball is when, uh, when the action takes place. So he's within two yards of the line of scrimmage. Remember, the, the free blocking zone extends three yards, so this, the ball is in the zone. And all the other requirements are satisfied here. So this is a legal block below the waist. And now Steve comments on the mechanics here by the, uh, the line judge. He's working out to get a good view. That's a really good practice, guys, especially down near the goal line. Get out. All right, let's move on. We've got a really interesting play here. Um, First, he talks about the mechanics of the flank official. He's, you know, he's in a great spot, looks real relaxed, lets the play go by. Okay, now watch this runner. I'm going to run it in real time. Shall you see that? Let's run it in slow motion. Now watch him lower the helmet and just deliver a blow to the, to the defender's chest. Now, Steve is not a proponent of calling targeting on the offense it's 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 one of those things that just isn't done and um, I I feel like I if if I was uh, judging this call and the flag was thrown I would support it and Steve says he would too uh, but he's not advocating for one so it's your judgment if you think that the uh, the offensive player purposely uh, you know targeted the uh, the opponent or speared him uh, you could throw a flag on this. Uh, again, I'm not advocating for it, but I would. I can see why it would be thrown. All right, moving on. Okay, next up, every official's nightmare, an inadvertent whistle. And so Steve's going to talk about what do we do to when we enforce this. Okay, so we've got to be ready for this. It doesn't happen often, but we've got to know how to administer it. Okay, so what's going to happen here, we're going to see the running back get hit twice. He's uh, going forward on the, after the first hit. He gets struck again. He is not down when the ball comes out. I'm going to go slow motion so you can see that. Right there, the ball comes out. He's not down. And uh, we got a whistle. Now you can see the umpire signals direction and <laughs> line judge is dead man walking. <laughs> Oh man, it's cold. Anyway, how do we administer this? Okay, so the uh, rule is four two three. It covers several different uh, situations that can occur when we have an inadvertent whistle. In this case, this situation is covered by uh, B, and it says the team in last possession may choose to either put the ball in play where possession was lost, so that's where he fumbled it, or replay the down. So. Uh, I'm guessing that offense would uh, would choose to replay the down in this particular case. And, of course, now you've got to go over and uh, eat a large plate of crow, explain this to the, uh, to the B coach, why he doesn't have the ball. Moving on. This is a really good uh, rules type of uh, test for you. So we're going to have two fouls here. And the first one's going to be committed by that player right there. Watch what he does. And keep an eye on the ball down by the goal line if you can see it. Okay, there that block right there is totally unnecessary. And the ball goes out of bounds at about the two-yard line. So we have what? We have two, you know, a foul by R and a foul by K. Now we have to decide whether that foul by uh, R was a live ball foul. And if it was, then the penalties will offset and we'll just, you know, kick it again from the previous spot. If it's a dead ball, then the R coach has the choice of forcing a re-kick with a five-yard penalty and then uh, and then we'll uh, enforce the dead ball personal foul. So he's going to get it either uh, a re-kick from the 50 or if he, if he decides not to re-kick, he's going to have the ball on the 20. Normally, because normally a kick out of bounds, we would for, we would give him the ball at the 35, but we're going to go 15 yards back for the dead ball foul. I hope that makes sense. 
Here's another uh, kicking situation uh, that has uh, fouls by both R and K. This is a scrimmage kick. So we've got PSK uh, enforcement involved here, and I hope you all understand what PS gets, post-scrimmage kick enforcement. And post-scrimmage kicks, uh, post-scrimmage kick fouls uh, committed by, uh, by R are enforced from the end of the kick. So it's very important that we know where the end of the kick is. That's why we throw a beanbag to mark the end of the kick. In this case, it's right there at the 20. I hope you saw that block in the back. Watch, watch these guys right here. Block in the back right there. Okay, got the flag. Now, got a face mask right there. And the question is, you know, how are we gonna enforce this? So we got two options here. One is that um, R can accept the face mask penalty and the two penalties, penalties will offset. We'll just kick it again. R can keep the ball if they decide, if they decline the face mask and we simply enforce the 10 yard penalty for the block in the back. So that's a choice that R will have to make and um, you know we need to present it to them that way. All right, this is an interesting play. I'm just going to let this run, see if, what you have. Do you have a false start, or do you have encroachment on this one? Take a look. Okay. I'll give it to you one more time in slow motion. Tell me what you have. All right. Let's see what Steve has. False start on the center. So he bends. He basically bends his legs as if he's going to snap the ball and he doesn't and that is a false start and it draws the defense off and more than likely the flank official I'll show it to you one more time uh, is going to get the defense for encroaching he probably doesn't see that mo movement uh, and this is a place where the referee or these two deeps can come in and, and consult and uh, make you know make the referee or the uh, flank official there aware that uh, that that action occurred before the defense encroached. All right, this is a cool play. This is uh, this is with regards to uh, when the helmet comes off of a runner. Where is our progress spot? So when that helmet comes off right there, the play is over, and anything that happens after this is dead ball. It doesn't count. So watch what happens. The runner gets another couple yards, and our flank official spots the uh, progress there. As you know, if without the helmet coming off, that's a proper spot. But the play was over. Progress should be uh, stopped at the 30. Okay, it's rules time. Uh, force. You all know your force rule, right? 2-13. If you don't know it, man, get into the book and read it and read it and read it and try to understand it. Uh, Reading, uh, the Reading Guide devotes four pages to this topic. I think it's uh, pages 115 through 119 of the current Reading Guide. Uh, it's a complicated rule and, um, and it's very confusing and a lot of officials don't understand it. So let's take a look at this play and you tell me what you have. A scrimmage kick obviously. Got a muff, two touches by R, and we have recovery by K. So, how do you rule? If you want to pause right now and take a look at force, feel free. I'm going to give you the answer in just a second. All right. This is a touchback. All right. Even though the K player touched it and it went into the end zone as recovered by R or if it had been recovered by K you know we could improperly rule this a safety the force that put the ball into the end zone was the kick despite the muff and if you look at the force uh, rule 213 213-4A uh, says force is not a factor on kicks going into R's end zone since these kicks are always a touchback regardless of who supplied the force 
So the only way that K could score a touchdown on a K scrimmage kick would be if the kick had ended and some subsequent action like a fumble by the R team uh, resulted in K either recovering or advancing the ball into the end zone. But a, a kicked ball that was never possessed can never be a touchdown for K or safety. All right, moving on. All right, so I'm going to end with this one. I'm just going to let this run and see if you can pick up the foul here. You see the flag by the official. So what did he say? Let's take a look at it again. Watch the runner. Watch his actions. Right about the five-yard line, the hand comes up. He's either waving or he's shushing. He's taunting. This is a taunt, right? And the official sees it and rightfully flags us for an unsportsmanlike act. So now the question is, where do we enforce this foul from? All right. So he starts about right there, five-yard line. But unsportsmanlike acts are treated and enforced, I should say, as dead ball fouls. So this touchdown will count, and the defense will have the option of, uh, of taking the foul, uh, the penalty for the foul, either on the try or on the subsequent kickoff. Well, that'll do it for this edition of OCFOA Plays of the Week. Guys, if, um, if any of the terms or uh, rules that I quote are confusing to you, feel free to ask me about them in the comments section below. If you'd like to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can click on my picture in the upper right. If you've missed any of the previous episodes, click on the playlist in the top left. This is Mark Andrews signing off.